What's going on? It's Preacher. And of course, the Legion is on its way. The new World of Warcraft expansion has been announced. It's called the Legion. Had a big pref, uh, press conference at Gamescom today where they bit the bullet and they're going full force, man. They announced it before BlizzCon. BlizzCon isn't even that far away and they had to get this out there now. And you could tell by the crowd reaction that it wasn't exactly a solid World of Warcraft crowd. Some people seem very confused about why people would want to wield an Ashbringer. They're like, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, it was an odd thing to do, but it seems they're pushing hard. And beta will be coming this year. So, no doubt, we hopefully, we'll get to see some alpha soon. Maybe I can bring some stuff to you early, early, early. And start looking at things like the new Demon Hunter class that's out there. The brand new zones. The new classes. Uh, the new class system. Where we're going to visit individually designed and tailored places for your class all that kind of stuff we're going to discuss in this video regarding we're going to do this in an interesting way i think after speaking with noble he's going to do a video based on the lore and stuff like that i'm not too into i'm not overly excited about things like the setting and all that kind of stuff it doesn't really tickle me the story of wow i've never thought was particularly great and i haven't gone into um i'm not in love with it so noble's going to do that so you can click his video there right there on the screen or you can click the link down below after this video where i'm going to talk about more about mechanics and features Although there will be definitely be some overlap. Obviously, we run independent channels. Uh, so my long and short of it is I was really, really happy with the new raids. When we are going to see Gul'dan, it was pretty clear after the final cutscene after you kill Archimonde in Wallers of Draenor is that Gul'dan will be up to something and that raid will not be an Orc raid. So Siege of Ogrimmar, yeah, fine. Hellfire Citadel, okay. All right, we have seen a lot of this sort of samey environment with all the chains and all sorts of whatnot with the orcs. So, yeah, I'm happy that it's going to be a high elf and very pretty locale. I like raiding in pretty locations, if I'm being honest. It's nice and relaxing on the eyes. It's not all doom and gloom all the time, although I do like dark stories. Every now and again, it's nice to be in somewhere that's quite light and airy and refreshing. That's why I quite liked High Mall. It was reasonably open. It wasn't too desolate, despite it was a crumbling ruins and so on and so forth. So I'm more than happy after then going into Blackrock Foundry and then going into Hellfire Citadel. That The new stuff will be based on things like Valhalla. So we got a look at quite a lot of the new dungeons. They reversed their decision. I think that's generally the theme of the Legion is a lot of reversal of decisions now the big question the big caveat we always have to ask ourselves before we go into this kind of thing is one don't let your imagination run away with you don't take everything that was said at gamescom as gospel please check the date this video was recorded because as i'm speaking celestial is tweeting about various class changes and trying to update people and get things corrected this is based entirely on the gamescom announcement that occurred today on the 6th of august so if it's after that they said there's more information coming over the next days we will be having a web show on saturday in order to bring in mr ghost who said after this that he is returning to wow he's excited about it i saw so many people join my uh, uh, community-based guild. There's a lot of communities and socials in there, all rejoining today in preparation for this expansion. So to say the hype is real, it is true. But keep it, keep your imagination under control, and things will change. Things will change. It's so important that you don't go, oh my god, but on like the 6th of August last year, you said this, and now it's this. I fucking hate you. Don't be that guy. This is the opening gambit, but there is a lot of decision reversal going on here. There's a lot of adoption of ideas that have been flying around the community, ideas that have come from myself. We just did the final boss round table where we had all the big guys and all the big YouTubers and all the guys who are very into different aspects of WoW talking about what they wanted to see in a new expansion. We saw lots of that actually occur today. And we also saw some things that we never thought about, which is great. That's what we want from Blizz is what I want is the things that I don't know I want. Please do that. So huge change of direction in various ways. So we'll work through it in a kind of standardized order, but that is a general situation. All right, guys. So yeah, the look at the places, the look at the dungeons looks really nice. A Violet Hold's returning. Oh, sweet Jesus. My face when I saw the words Violet Hold once again. I'm sure anybody who played Wrath of the Lich King went, whoa, 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 <laughs> whoa, 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 Violet Hold, really? That's the one you chose, but they're going to do something pretty dramatic with it, it seems like. So yeah, we'll see what happens with that. Um... If you're going to revamp something, Violet Hold wasn't exactly the top of my list, but if you make it completely different to the fucking joke 
that Violet Hold was in Wrath of the Lich King, I'll be more than happy, to say the least. So Dungeons and Raids looks great. They're sticking, and then this is the thing they're not changing, is what worked in WAD? We can all agree the raiding worked in WAD. It did. Even if you didn't like it, you are kind of in the minority there. Something you can always accept is your opinion isn't exactly one of the majority, and the raiding in WAD was fantastic. It's why I'm still playing, if I'm being completely honest. If it wasn't for the raiding, I would probably have given up and moved on to other games and made content about those games. Uh, but as it stands, the raiding was fantastic and I was more than happy to continue playing. So I'm really happy to see that they're going, you know what we got right in what? The raiding. So we're going to keep the raiding the same. We're going to have multiple raids, some with less bosses, some with more bosses, split into different areas, different locales, different environments. We're going to kill Gul'dan pretty early. It looks like we're going to kill him pretty early on, get him out of the way and move on to bigger and better things. So I'm more than happy with that going on. I think that's a pretty fantastic decision there. Uh, the reversal on the idea that they weren't going to make dungeons. Well, his opening gambit was exactly against what they said just a few months ago, uh, which was we don't see the point in making five mans because people consume them too quickly and therefore it's a waste of time for us. And then they turned around and said, we need to think of a way that that doesn't happen. Yeah, you do, which was my point exactly. I do not want Blizzard turning around and saying, you know what? Yeah, we could make you new dungeons and new interesting stuff, but you'll just you do it too fast, so we're not going to fucking bother. Yeah, Fuck you. Figure out a way that makes me want to go back there. That makes me want to do things. And they're trying to do that. So that's hopefully going to work out. We're not going to have the same modeling wad where it's like, well, you know what? We'll bump things up to Mythic, which was just what the heroics were in Alpha, and do no work whatsoever. And if you didn't know that that's what Mythic dungeons are, that's what they are. That is exactly pretty much how the dungeons, the heroic dungeons were in the Alpha and the Beta of Walls of Draenor. The ones we got on release were significantly... Uh, reduced in difficulty compared to what they were originally. So that's what we got there. So I'm so glad that we're getting new dungeons. Quite a few announced. Hopefully there's going to be more. But I'm not going to complain about the fact that they're refocusing their efforts on five mans. No mention of scenarios, which I thought was interesting. No mention whatsoever about scenarios. Have they just gone? Was it just a bad idea? It was a cool idea. But whether or not the resource to usage is going to pay as paid off seems to be a negative and by that i mean yeah they're cool they tell a good story they're a wonderful way of telling a story but after we've told that story and people have done the scenario are they interesting the answer is quite simply no not really uh once you understand how this system works it's not that fun to fill the fill up the fucking cauldron with monkey bones or whatever the shit and do all that kind of stuff and walk around the little maze inside Mogreshan. no it's not that amazing and people were doing them simply because it was the fastest way of doing valor so it's cool that they ignored the stats and how many people were doing scenarios because they were simply doing them because they were fast and nothing else and nothing more not because they were enjoying them which i think is a great thing um okay so we had a bit of a cgi trailer with gul'dan he's gonna obviously illidan's returning if you didn't notice that illidan is on his way back and yeah i'm even on the team i thought we killed him in the black temple but i was corrected multiple times by lots of people before illidan was actually brought up for the legion expansion is that no you didn't he returned to the nether he's still out there some people even hoped that he'd make an appearance in walls of draenor and they're going with the big guy once again a solid character to carry the expansion i'm not going to go away and be one of those guys who's pessimistic and say oh just rehashing a fan favorite he's a fan favorite who was alive and he is coming back and it makes sense that if we're going into the nether and we're doing all this naughty stuff with the legion that yeah illidan is some way involved and of course with the release of the demon hunter it makes absolute sense sense that that is the time so i'm more than happy to see all of them back in some feature i thought he was dead if he was dead and it was kind of like the kaelthas thing where yeah i was dead but now i'm back and i'm kind of like a ghoulish version i would have been pissed uh but as it turns out and in tune with the story, Illidan was not dead, as I thought. So I'm more than happy to see him back as well. I thought that was pretty cool. So, Artifact System. Let's get this out of the way first. before We'll do Demon Hunter last, I think. The Artifact System. This is the one that's creating the most pessimism inside me. Okay? Um, the system itself looks fantastic. Okay? So let's ignore for the moment the Artifacts. And if you're not sure what Artifacts are because you're just sort of catching up on information, the Artifacts are going to be essentially weapons of major lore. So you're talking your Doomhammers, you're talking about your, um, your Ashbringers. They're going to be in the game and they're going to be able to be accessed by seemingly everyone. Okay? And it's specific towards your class. So the DKs will be doing stuff with Frostmourne. The Rep Paladins will be going after Ashbringer. The Shamans will be going after Doombringer. So these big 
old school weapons that we know and love for many people who have a very close uh, relationship with in terms of their lore and the power that weapon holds you will be able to wield one in fact you are going to get given it essentially what they said is as it's going to be similar to how the garrison system works in walls draenor which you'll do your opening quest you will arrive in the new zone and then straight away you're going to be off to your class-based area which we'll talk about soon and you will be off to start work on your artifact weapon okay so let, we'll get to the actual idea that it's these weapons of history in a moment the system itself looks amazing okay rather than just have an extra talent which is the usual way they go is like a level 110 talent which is the new level cap they've given this whole new path for you to do and the best thing about this okay the system i think is lovely the best thing about this is anything you decide to do contributes to the actual progression of your artifact weapon so you have a essentially a talent system a fully fledged talent system of which you can choose different paths by the way they showed that clearly on the screenshot is you can choose where you want to go you don't have to pick up say talent one to move on to talent two you can pick and choose a path from various choices there and it's an entire thing to be working on after you cap and you can do anything you want to do they say you can do dungeons you can raid you can pvp you can quest you could do whatever it is that you enjoy to do in world of warcraft and that will contribute to your artifact resource okay your currency in essence and that your artifact power as they're calling it and then you can invest that power into the weapon to unlock things like additional spell abilities similar to what we have in a talent system already and you'll be able to do all that at level 110 this is a great idea why because when we get to the next expansion, which is inevitable, of course, all that is washed away and something new can come in, okay? We're not stuck with this endlessly growing talent tree, which they kind of have to keep modifying and twisting and trying to balance and do all these kind of things. And they can easily swap something out very, very minor inside there because they're only minor spell changes, as we saw with some of the examples there, which are all subject to change, is that we saw various little tiny little quirks and twists very similar to how the perks worked in walls of draenor which was great they just altered how those spells worked without making it game breaking and that allowed them to also because it's tied to the artifact weapon is that they the next expansion they can wash all that away and start again with something entirely new probably something similar but work a way around it and change it and alter it and even minor changes along that path can probably do some cool things so that is really really nice to see this system absolutely adore it not only that it never seemingly really ends and has a completely open-ended opportunity to just continue to alter and contribute towards it why after you finish your talent system with your uh, weapon and your artifact weapon is, is at its maximum power it then moves cosmetics thank god we've been begging for this for fucking months and months and months we know loot's not interesting anymore so how do you make it interesting you just make it cosmetic give people the chance to customize the fuck out of their weapons i don't particularly care as you guys know i'm not fighting for my own personal wants here i know there are way 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 in the majority of people who love what their character looks like so give them something to work towards that is entirely cosmetic and guess what that never has to end over the course of this expansion the artist guys can just continuously be churning out things that they think are cool and in fact their full description during the press conference of how this worked was we just said to our artists make something cool here's the base weapon here's an ashbringer do something cool with it and they came back with things like, well, what if it was just made of fire? What if it was all uh, it was all broken up into pieces, but there's lightning holding it together? What if we did this? What if it was all shadowy and dark? What if it was an evil one? What if it was the corrupted one like we had in the original Nax? What if we just do this? That's great, because people will go, oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I'll work towards that. And even if they don't particularly like it, I guarantee you people will log in and be like, well, I want to unlock that skin for my weapon, so I'm going to go and do a few dungeons. I'm working on artifact power today. Instead of logging in and going, well, I need to do my dailies. And then the dailies are done and they're like, hmm. So this is kind of something that you can go, yeah, maybe today I'm going to work on that, but I'm not too excited about that skin. I'm kind of excited for something else, but maybe I'll just work on that every now and again or a few days. But it's not tied to anything. It doesn't have a daily reset. You can just go ahead and you just get on with things and get it on the way. So that is fantastic. Absolutely fucking fantastic. Now, what's curious about this is it's for each spec. There are 36 different ones, okay? They are for each spec. Now, that means that you have three times in most cases amount of things to be doing maybe you want to work on your resto one if you're a druid maybe you're going to work on your cat one maybe you're going to work on your guardian one maybe you're going to go and do the moonkin one whatever you're going to do you're going to be able to log in and be like you know what 
yeah, I'm going to work on my Moonkin artifact today. Why? That's what I want to do. I want to log in. I want to do that. I'm going to do some dungeons, or maybe I'm going to join a pug raid, or maybe I'm just going to do some BGs. Maybe I'm going to do some questing. Maybe I want to get Lawmaster. Maybe I'm going to do this. And it promotes people picking and choosing what they like to do and going and doing it. And of course, no doubt, if you're seriously into completionism, there'll be some way of doing it the absolute fastest. But regardless, the rewards are cosmetic, ultimately. And I think that's fantastic. I think that's so good that we're starting to see that shift towards there. Absolutely amazing. In terms of it being the, and again, uh, Nobble will no doubt touch on this more than I will. In terms of it being these weapons of old, I really, really dislike that. <laughs> Hugely dislike that. Because this is clearly something that is massively accessible by everybody. So we could probably think of this as something similar to Legendary Rings and the Capes. Is, yeah, not everybody will do it for whatever reason, but they are certainly accessible by everybody. And do we want to see fucking thousands of Ashbringers and whatnot, some Frostmourns and Doomhammers rolling around? Not really. We really don't want to see that. Nobody wants to see that who's got any sense. Although some players will be like, oh, I'm going to get Doombringer. Yeah, but wait till he, sat, he stood next to everybody else who's also got Doombringer. Guess what loses its flavor quicker than anything? Something everybody has, right? So, yeah, the accessibility is going to be a bit of a turnoff for me. I would have liked them to have uh, done something different, like uh, the Lothamar and Rock Dalar, in before someone tells me those are actually weapons of law. But as far as I know, Benediction and such were not weapons of law. And, but were cool anyway, because people just went, oh, that's the priest one. That's the hunter one, right? That was just the thought process that went into that. It didn't need to be something of classic origin, although it gave a great lore background to it. I suppose, maybe, I don't know about the the, pit, the bits of Frostmon being scattered around Ice Crown that like we just went, oh yeah. So I smashed Frostmon up and I just threw it in the snow and just fucked off. Really? Did you? I don't recall doing that, if I'm being completely honest. In fact, if Ashbring, if uh, Frostmon was around, I know plenty of people in my raid, at least, who would have happily spent all year there gluing the motherfucker back together. Uh, so, yeah, whatever on that one. So being the actual named weapons of history, I don't know. What is interesting that these are saying these are the weapons because obviously Doomhammer is Thrall's weapon. His Thrall is likely to bite the bullet or something along those lines. Uh, they said that it's, play it's from characters that have either died or have lost hope. Uh, so probably Thrall has probably lost some hope. Had a little cry in the corner and someone's going to walk up and just say, that's my Doomhammer now. Okay, Thrall. All right, that's mine now. It's not yours. That's going to be mine. All right, cool. The next thing that I was also really excited about, I've got to be honest, I'm a little bit hype, I'm a little bit excited, but pessimistic at the same time, was the class orders thing. So this is kind of the change from the garrisons, okay? This is the way they've gone with it this time, is to say, let's put some identity back into the classes. If it's done right, it will be amazing. But we've seen garrisons. It might not be done right. Why is it amazing? I always felt things like uh, Moon Moonglade, and of course the Arcarus Hold, uh, were fantastic because that was where it didn't matter if you were Horde or Alliance, it didn't matter who you were fighting, it didn't matter your gear level, ultimately you're still a druid. Okay? And you, that binds you together in a way that the race chain, the race the differential doesn't, and the faction dis differential doesn't do that. You are still a druid. Um, where are they going to go with that? I don't know. So you're going to have these places, which are obviously like Paladins are getting like, Light's Hope, Warlocks are getting some special fucking demon place, all this kind of stuff that fits and suits your uh class and you're going to be able to go there and do stuff that's related to your class and your sort of artifacts and stuff will start there as well uh how are they going to do that i would love to see and this is where my imagination starts running away uh my i would absolutely love to see that in those areas which should only be accessible by people of those classes one you can speak to the other faction would be kind of interesting yeah you can the paladins can communicate the blood elves can speak with the humans if they're in light's hope chapel that's part of their core the shamans can communicate the Draenei can speak to the orcs if they're within the maelstrom and they're bound by being shaman and not bound by being horde or alliance i'd love to see that i would also love to see activities that relate to that spec alone Right? So it relates to shaman only activity. It relates to druids only activities. Even if it's something as stupid as feral cat racing or something along those lines or whatever. Something silly that only that spec can do. And there's all these kind of things you can do there where you can actually meet up with people of the opposing factions and do things together in a team environment because you're class based. And those activities are class based, which means that the warlocks are doing warlocky things, the warriors are doing warrior things, no doubt beating the shit out of each other. Whatever it might be, I'll just be interested to see where it goes because it was only kind of touched on. They showed the environments, 
But what actually goes on there, I don't know. Whether or not it could it can go as far as this. It could be the things I suggested where there's loads to do that's very class specific and you can only do it with other people of the same class and you can talk to people of the other same class. Or it could be a building that looks like warlocks were there once. Right? And it could go, it could be that far away. What they had said is that you have a hall of champions. You are the leader. Everybody is the leader, okay, of your class place. So uh, yeah, my idea is probably not going to pan out. But you will get followers again, but they're giving us all the things that we cried out for with garrisons, man. All the stuff that seems so common sense. We can fucking customize them. We could do stuff with them. They will actually aid us on our journey instead of the shitty bodyguard thing. What the fuck was that? Get the fuck out of here with that. So you're going to be able to take your followers out and do things with them. They discover new areas and make them an integral part of your gaming experience. So they say. The, th the, the class orders thing is the thing I'm most pessimistic about it, about, about it being just a gimmick. Because I don't know anything about it. Hopefully we'll find out more about it coming soon. But if it's kind of a glorified garrison that's kind of got less followers doing bigger missions. Yeah, it is what it is. Whatever. But it has potential. Let's leave it there. It has huge amounts of potential. Before we get into the demon stuff, let's talk about the honor system. This is something that's kicking up a huge fuss on forums. And I absolutely cannot understand why. Because it looks fantastic to me. Fi we only discussed it on the web show last weekend. Last weekend, we talked on the web show about why the hell isn't there, why the hell isn't there individual talent trees for PvP yet. They have spent nearly a decade trying to balance talent trees to suit two completely different environments. What an, they must look at the resources spent on that and go, why did we even fucking bother? Why didn't we just do something that was PvP only and we can balance that and then PvE can have its own balancing system and then we're not stepping on each other's toes. The classes still keep their identity because we're keeping all the base stuff the same, but their talents are different because these are PvP orientated. And now they're actually doing it. So it's no surprise. It's not a case of I called it, I'm the prophet. We called a lot of stuff, honestly. A lot of the predictions we made as a community and across the panels that we've discussed recently made a lot of these speculations and said this is what would be a good idea. And a lot of that stuff is coming. So we have to accept here they were listening to the community. So the PvP system is getting a lot of stick. So what is it? What's going to happen? So basically, your gear won't mean fuck all in PvP. Which I think a lot of people have asked for, unless you're a noob. If I'm being completely honest, the only people who were like, I want to be overpowered are noobs. Because they want to crush people. And that's it. They don't want to actually PvP. They want to crush people. So... It's probably a bad day for you guys, but I have little to no sympathy for that. <laughs> I have really little to no sympathy. If your p whole purpose of PvP is just so you can run up to people who've either just started or haven't got any gear, just to smash them into the floor and go, ha ha ha, I'm OP, then yeah, whatever. Um, what you're going to get now is an individual talent system, which they said quite honestly, and I was glad of this, is you will get the talents very quickly. Okay, so there are 50 to unlock, but they will happen very, very quickly. So once you start PvP, you're just going to be unlocking them and unlocking them and unlocking them. So it's not a case of you'll be miles behind because they're trying to eliminate that. Gear is just going to scale up. They did a nice side-by-side, -side, actually, of two level 100 characters with a ludicrous power difference between them. And it's just pointless having such a system because PvP in itself then it just makes no sense. So you'll get a talent system which you could unlock, which has uh, PvP-specific talents attached to it, which do different things, and that means the PvE talent system remains the same. Absolutely awesome. Uh, they mentioned things like abolish, Mal abolish Magic, which is a constant dispel and mind quickness and blah, 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 blah. But then they brought the prestige ranks. Now, I've seen a lot of people kicking off about this. I can only imagine these are the guys, if I'm being judgmental and generalizing here, and you feel free to correct me. These are the kind of guys who take an entire season to get all their honor gear. That's the kind of guys I'm thinking about, which is a kind of, it seems like an entitlement attitude. So what is the prestige system? Well, obviously, Blizzard's linked to Activision. They brought up Call of Duty on the stage. They were not trying to get away from it, which is essentially means a simple thing. Once you, if you just love doing BGs all the time, which people do, they just love BGing all day and arenaing all day or whatever it is they want to do, which is going to have Conquest or whatever links to it. But if you just love PVPing all day, fine. What you can actually do then is reset your honor, and get a prestige rank for it. So once you've got everything, okay, you've leveled up all your talents, you've got all that stuff, you can then go, okay, cool, I've got that. I'm going to reset that, get prestige one, and then start all over again. And it'll get harder and harder each time. But we're just going to give you really cool cosmetic rewards for doing that. 
Again, the cosmetic route, the correct choice in my opinion. And they showed off some way cool armor. You will just look far more badass, but you are no more powerful. And that's the important thing. You are no more powerful than a prestige zero guy if you've got the maximum prestige. Okay? You are no more powerful. You just look way cooler. If you, in your opinion, and it's a subjective opinion at that. Some people might not like it. Some people might rock a normal transmog when they're PvP. Whatever's your poison. It doesn't fucking matter. It's there if you want to do it. It's there if you don't want to do it. And it doesn't affect anything. It doesn't affect anything. So this is great if you love PvPing all the time. Because, yeah, okay, cool. I'm just going to work up my prestige levels. I'm just going to go and do some BGs at the same time. I'm getting artifact power. I'm doing all sorts of different things by just doing the things I enjoy. Which is the best way to go. Barely anything mentioned in here. And it does seem that the artifact weapons might be the only weapon you wield. So they might be dispensing with the idea of boss drop weapons entirely. Where well, that's still up for speculation. But they're just saying, look, do what you enjoy. And we'll just keep giving you rewards for it. But they're not going to just be gear. Or fucking crystals or something ludicrous. So the PvP system looks really good to me anyway. But I don't PvP. So I am fully prepared to take the fury of everybody on me. So the Demon Hunter, one of the things I will obviously try and get a video out for you as soon as I get a chance to play it, which hopefully won't be too far away. Uh, the Demon Hunter is basically, from what I could tell looking at the talents, looking from a pearly talent perspective, is just a melee demo warlock. Uh, that's exactly what it looks like to me. A lot of the spells are very, very reminiscent. You have Chaos Strike, which was basically like Chaos Wave, from what I could tell by the description. You had uh, an AoE Chaos Stun, Shadow Fury, right? <laughs> you had all these things. Uh, one of the specs even called Havoc, right? So, yeah, one of the defining, uh, the defining spells of a warlock, Destruction Warlock, that is just the entire DPS spec. Uh, let's talk about first about having two specs. Love this. This is finally the kind of blizzard I've been looking to see for a while is do we have to have three? No. There's no fucking rule. Just like the same rule we don't have to have an expansion every 12 months. Stop making shitty rules for yourself if it doesn't make the game better. And I, this is where they seem to be going with it. Which is, I, I can't imagine in Mr. Pandaria they would have looked at the monk and gone, do we need to have two, uh, three specs? I can't imagine them doing that. They would have just gone, yes, we absolutely have to because everybody else has three. Where with the Demon Warlock, uh, the Demo Hunter, they could have easily made two DPS specs. Easily. But they went, is it make it any better? And that's the question. If we have three and we try and fit another DPS spec, does it make it better? Not really. Well, let's not do that. Let's just have one DPS spec and one tank spec because that looks cool. And just go from there and then balance that properly. Great. Good idea. Don't just throw it in because everybody else has it. So I've got to have it. No, fuck off. Uh, the play style is very similar to a kind of Diablo 3 style where you're going to generate fury and then spend fury on that. It's fury again, Demo Warlocks. So I'll be really interested to see what the revamp is for Demo Warlocks. We already know it's coming, right? We already know it's coming. So Demo Warlocks are going to be massively changed. I think that's pretty clear. Uh, but it's basically a melee Demo Warlock from what I can see, which is cool. Nothing wrong with the Demo Warlock. And there's somebody who played a Warlock main uh, during Cataclysm. I can tell you we were essentially melee at the time anyway, so not, nothing new there. Uh, another melee class. Let's talk about the Demon Hunter specifically. So, customization is off the fucking wall with this thing. Uh, they have really spared no expense in how you can design it. Again, going for that cosmetic feel. Let's just make it look cool. And they did that. What if people don't want horns? And he said, you know, if you're mentally challenged, you probably don't want horns. Yeah, that's fine. Some people just won't want horns. They want to look cool. Uh, that's as simple as that. You can have different tattoos, different skins, all sorts of stuff. Way more advanced than what we've seen with the other character creations, which I honestly, I find quite poor. Do I want a nose ring or not with my Tauren is about as far as I get. Am I going to be a white Tauren or a brown Tauren or a black Tauren? And that's about it. I don't get to design really intricate, cool things with most of my characters. And most of the time it's covered with their face. Where now that uh, everything's covered by armor, where they said, hey, Demon Hunter armor exposes most of your body. Why? Because that's what you wanted to see. Because that's why you spent so long in your character creation screen. So really cool with that. It's a hero class. So based on what the, they said on stage, and this is entire speculation, we didn't see a confirmation of that and still haven't seen one yet. You'll start at level 100. You're going to go straight into the action. So the opening story, so they're going to make it very similar to the Death Knight, which is where you started, obviously, with the Death Knight storyline and brought you straight up to 55, uh, I believe. <laughs> they are 60. 60? Or 58? Something around there. Um, they're going to just kick you off straight away at level 100 with an opening story, which will give you your abilities, and then, boom, you're off into the action. A uh, little sad. I won't get to use my level 90 boost, but still, fair enough. Uh, so customization looks good. The abilities... 
Um, let's talk about double jump straight off the bat. Double jump. Um, it looks like it's not really high. <laughs> I don't think it's as game breaking as some people are seeing. I can imagine a lot of people rolling this because they want double jump. The same people who probably rolled a monk because they wanted roll. Uh, yeah, once you actually have it, it's not that game breaking. Some people thought roll and having multiple charges of roll would be totally overpowered. No, it's probably not. And I doubt double jump will be as well. If you're into jump getting into weird places, then maybe uh, Demon Hunter's for you. I will say the mobility overall looks fantastic. With multiple charges on charge, they also have a disengage style ability and they have double jump. Their mobility, which is what I care about as a mechanics guy, looks fantastic. But did we need another really mobile tank? No, no, we didn't. Uh, warriors and monks very very good mobility already i don't think we needed that aspect and that's not something that really intrigues me for the tank spec it's like oh great i'm really mobile i'm already really mobile honestly uh so the mobility isn't that intriguing to me from a tank perspective what about a dps perspective again not really warriors rogues uh monks all have great mobility it's only the dks really that suffer in the mobility rep paladins kind of as well i mean they have a burst speed but uh, for melee, certainly from a PvE perspective, not really again. So although it does have great mobility, it's not a negative thing by any means, but is it something that's class-defining? Eh, no, not really. Not as I don't think as much as people seem to think. I mean, we already have multiple charging, leaping warriors and intervening warriors, and we already have monks leaping around the place and flying serpent kicking all over the place. Eh, no. So the mobility is great. Is it unique? No. No, it's not. Um, so we'll be interested to see on that as well. It does seem to mix in some range stuff, although the demonstration of the eye laser, which is, I forget the name, it's the warlock ability. You guys know what it is. Uh, there's demo warlock ability, which is exactly the same. Um, uh, it was done in melee as well. So although it does have a range aspect to it, and you could do, it seems to be mind seer. From the description of it, it just looks like mind seer. You can attack something far away and it AoEs and cuts through it and all that kind of stuff. It looks similar to mind seer in its nature, which is cool for uh, AoEing a pack that's at distance, but you're, it looks like you're going to be a melee class, so it's unlikely that's going to play much of a part. So far, and this is balls to the wall, besides the visuals of the Demon Hunter, uh, which are very, very cool, very, very cool, and it includes the metamorphosis into the big, strong, mega Demon Hunter, Besides the ability to see stealth units, which Flare exists and so on and so forth, uh, I've seen nothing that makes me go, oh shit, that's awesome. And I know I might get flack for that, but let me just re again reiterate. Visually, they look fantastic. Their abilities don't, don't really blow my dick off. They don't blow my dick off like the Monk did, which came with a completely unique playstyle. Um, the Monk's Chi and Energy reserves including the debuffs and the combo breakers and all that kind of stuff was all brand new what we saw so far and it's still so early guys i gotta reiterate that was pretty basic stuff uh which was a cleave essentially and an aoe and the ability to do an aoe stun and that was about it the mobility even demonstrated in the video wasn't amazing that charge is not particularly long right uh so yeah from that perspective the demon hunter mechanically doesn't blow my dick off it really doesn't and i'm hoping to see something else happen there but so far it has nothing unique to me other than it's really fantastic visual customization which could easily be enough to carry it easily be enough uh it's obviously way too early to talk about balance and whatnot so i'm not going to do that so hopefully there'll be more information out by saturday when we'll rock a web show but that is my initial thoughts on what i saw I hope that covers most of the topics you guys are interested in. Um, a couple of things people probably want me to bring up is that the they kind of slyly pointed out the survival hunters are getting a staff. So one, one thing I'll take away from that without getting too giddy is that hunters are finally going to get the revamp that they have been so crying out for. Absolutely crying out for. Um, they needed it to happen. And by survival hunters not getting a bow as their artifact weapon, yeah. That looks like that's actually going to happen. So I'll be more than happy with that. But it also looks like I'll be working over Christmas. <laughs> which I'm not surprised about. I'm just hoping that the Alpha or whatever doesn't launch in the next few weeks when my new son is born. And then hopefully I can rock out a lot of content for you like I did for Wallets of Draenor. Always keep an open mind, guys. So this is a very early look at it. Thank you for listening. Uh, we'll see you shortly with far more War World of Warcraft Legion information. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.